Hey, hey, you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chelsea and I am a full-time working mom that likes to just vlog about my life. And part of that includes my journey through infertility, doing IVF, and if that interests you, go ahead and click that subscribe button and follow me here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram, which is where I got a lot of the questions that I'm going to be addressing in this video, which is all about my postpartum fitness journey. So I'm excited to be sharing that with you guys today. I mainly wanted to share this video because I searched videos like this when I was in the thick of postpartum recovery and trying to get back to my old, strong, active, and fit self, but I felt like everyone that I watched on YouTube, their journeys just seemed to be pretty easy and they would be like four months postpartum and pretty much like completely looking nor like exactly how they did before their pregnancy. And that's just not the case for everyone. So I wanted to make this video as a way to help people out there that may be like me that are feeling a little discouraged in their own journey and I just want you guys to understand that everyone's postpartum recovery is different and getting your body back <laughs> is a different journey for everyone and it doesn't come as easy for everyone as it might seem. So with that being said, let's get into this video. So I feel like in order to really share my story, I wanted to share before I got pregnant, during pregnancy, and after to get the full picture. And with that, I'll also be sharing a little bit of what my fitness routine was like while I was going through IVF because I get that question a lot. So before pregnancy, before IVF, I was very, very active. I've always been very active. My mom, she was very good at prioritizing exercise and her wellness and health. And even with seven kids, she still made it a priority to get up early and do her aerobics or go for a walk or whatever before starting the day. And I really admire that in her and I've sort of taken that on easily in my life just because it was just what I knew. So I was very active growing up. I danced. I did all sorts of activities <laughs> that really moved my body and kept me physically fit and just capable of doing pretty much anything that I wanted to do. So I have felt very blessed to have a very active and healthy body. And my passion for fitness grew and grew and I actually ended up graduating with a degree in exercise science and becoming yoga certified and I taught yoga. I've been teaching yoga for the past 10 years and I, you know, obviously just really have a passion for fitness. I love working out. I am the type that if anyone asks me like invites me to a fitness class, I will for sure say yes. It doesn't matter if I've already worked out that day because I just love, love moving my body. Before I got pregnant, I did a ton of cardio. That was mainly my go-to thing. So other than yoga, I was doing a lot of running and a lot of like group fitness classes. I lifted weights here and there, but that was never really my thing before I got pregnant. So after we started trying to get pregnant, it had been about a couple years and it, you know, we started going through testing and stuff because we were concerned as to why we couldn't get pregnant. And I backed away from working out a little bit. Um, my yoga workouts decreased in intensity before I was doing really crazy poses and um, just really hot like yoga classes and power yoga. And I was very into that. And I was running a ton, like I said, and I just kind of pulled back from all of that because I wasn't sure if that was contributing to my infertility. So then we figured out, you know, we needed to do IVF. So once we decided to do IVF, I kind of went back to doing more intense workouts, just sort of while we were in the waiting phase to actually getting started with IVF. And then when we started IVF, I dropped down my intensity again. So I just wanted to make sure that I was, you know, really taking care of my body and not pushing it too hard because I don't know, I just didn't know if that could affect my outcome. And I talked to my doctor a lot about that. And for the most part, my doctors were fine with me working out like I did before. They just told me to decrease intensity or stop working out during um, stimulation injections 
while my ovaries were getting really big and right before egg retrieval. So I mainly, like I said, had been doing cardio stuff. And so I just kind of decreased that. And I was, I always did yoga. I've always done yoga at least for the past like 10 to 12 years. That's been a huge part of my life, but I also decreased the intensity of my yoga workouts when I was going through IVF for sure. So I don't know if it was because of that or just because of the hormones or my intense craving for fast food during IVF, but I did gain a good 10 pounds while going through IVF, which I've heard is common. So if you're doing IVF and you're gaining weight, don't stress too much about it. Like I know it's frustrating to see that scale just like shoot up, but it's normal. So after doing IVF and before our embryo transfer, cause we did a frozen embryo transfer, I continued to work out kind of back to where I was working out pretty intense or I guess consistently Monday through Saturday, basically I would work out and do a lot of cardio, running, yoga, that sort of thing. I also started to incorporate more weightlifting at this time because it just interested me and I kind of had fun doing it. And at this time I didn't really lose any weight. I pretty much stayed at that post IVF weight, which was 10 pounds heavier than I was before. So then when I did my frozen embryo transfer, I did decrease my intensity and didn't work out quite as much as I was doing before for about a month as I was going through my frozen embryo transfer. And then once we got our positive pregnancy test, which we were so lucky to get that the first round of IVF, our first frozen embryo transfer. My doctor told me that I could pretty much just go back to whatever I was doing before I got pregnant. But I was a little cautious because I don't know, I just, it's scary, right? You invest all this time, effort, energy, money, emotional, I don't know, stress into IVF. So I just wanted to make sure that I was really taking care of myself. So I did a lot of yoga during this time, but I took it easy. I would run, but I would like only do like two to three miles three or four times a week. And that was until I got into my second trimester. And then I started to feel a lot better about running and being active. So I pretty much worked out like normal for two months or so until I was 24 weeks, at which point I literally felt like my body was just going to break if I ran again. So I pretty much stopped running at 24 weeks and just would go on walks. And I would try to go on walks three or four times a week at least. And then I did start lifting weights a little bit more. So nothing too crazy or nothing too heavy, but I was lifting weights like two to three times a week instead of once or twice a week, just because that felt good on my body and didn't seem to bother me at all. So that's one thing with pregnancy is I think you really just have to fill it out and not compare yourself to other people because I was watching other people that were pregnant that were like 30 weeks doing all these like tuck jumps and burpees and I'm like oh my gosh that I would break my body would just look like I could not do that and I was a little jealous when I saw people running <laughs> and I just realized you really can't compare yourself because every pregnancy is different every body's different everyone's unique and just do the best you can if you can walk every day or just do some squats or do some yoga, then that's great. Just move your body in whatever way you can. Because for me, working out isn't just about, you know, having a toned body and look good. It's so much about mental clarity. And that's why I love working out is because it provides that mental clarity for my very high strung brain. So I'm going to be honest, pregnancy was a lot harder than I expected it to be. I thought I'd be able to work out all the way through my pregnancy just fine. I thought maybe I'd have to decrease the intensity a little bit, but by the time I was 30 weeks, I pretty much could barely go on walks longer than two miles. Like a two mile walk was a lot for me at that time. However, I did still go to some high fitness classes, which if you're not familiar with that, high fitness is like an aerobics class. I think like old school aerobics, but they do burpees. And all the moves are done to really fun songs that you know and you can sing along with. And so I love high fitness, so I would go to high fitness classes, but I would modify everything and barely like move, but it was so fun. So I continued to do that up until I think 39 weeks, like honestly, like right before I had my baby, I was doing high fitness. As well as yoga, I pretty much did yoga for at least 10 minutes every single day I was pregnant, and that was so helpful. 
So I will link some of my favorite yoga YouTube channels down below that really helped me while I was pregnant because I do get asked that question a lot. So after having my baby via C-section, I took it pretty easy. I did start going on walks basically a few days after having her and I would start really small, maybe just go up and down my street and then I started walking to our park and then, you know, I gradually started taking longer and longer walks and I continued to do walks and a little bit of yoga and I was doing postpartum yoga, which was great. And I was doing that until I got the clear from my doctor at six weeks to work out as normal. So he said, just fill it out. You should be fine to do whatever workouts you were doing before you were pregnant or, you know, whatever workouts you want to do now, but just fill it out and take it easy if it's, you know, a little too much for you if you're filling it that's a sign to step back a little bit you know if you're feeling at all just sore or if something hurts or strains you in any way then just pull back so I just started with incorporating jogging into my walks so I would just jog for you know a certain amount of time and then I'd walk and I just did that longer and longer and I would say it took me about six months to get back to where I was jogging or running a full three miles that was sort of my standard before I got pregnant was just if I was going to go out for a run, I would just run three miles at a minimum. So yeah, it was about six months before I could do that. And in this time, as far as my weight goes, I was, so I gained 50 pounds when I was pregnant and I really didn't think I'd gain that much, but I did. But fortunately it did all come off eventually and it wasn't easy, but it did come off. But I'd say at six months, I was still 15, honestly, like over 20 pounds from where I was pre-IVF. So that was a little bit like frustrating. So at six months, I, cause I could fill it. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm overweight or whatever. And I look, I don't look like how I look. It was like, I, I felt heavy. Like I felt like I just couldn't be as strong and active and do as much as I could do before I was pregnant or before IVF. So at six months, I set a goal and that goal was to get back to being that strong and active person that I had been pre-pregnancy, pre-IVF. And the way I knew I could do that was if I just was consistent, showed up to the gym, you know, four days a week, worked out four, five, six days a week, maybe. Um, probably, I think at a minimum, I was trying to work out four days a week. And, you know, I had some plans to do weightlifting and some running and yoga. And I was just like, I know I can get back to feeling as strong as I did before. So I didn't really follow any particular programs at this time. I just was looking up YouTube workouts and either doing them at home, going to the gym, lifting weights, running on the treadmill or running outside. At this time it was winter, so I did a lot of running inside and I would continue to go on walks with my daughter and my dog as much as I could, as long as the weather was okay. So I was consistent and I did show up every day and I really worked on my diet as well. And I kind of started dabbling into the keto diet and low carb and that was tricky for me because I kept getting the keto flu and I was nursing and it would kind of throw off my milk supply. So that was tricky. That was hard. So after doing that for like a month, I backed off and just sort of tried to watch my carb intake. So I was eating a little bit of a low carb diet, really focusing on my protein though. That was like huge. And like my intake with veggies and fruits and all that stuff. So I was very intentional with my diet. And I think diet is really a huge part of what you see, like the results. And if you wanna be stronger and get more out of your workouts, you really have to fuel your body so that you can take on those workouts. So after doing that for about two months, I would say eight months postpartum was when I felt like, wow, I feel like myself again. So it took me a good eight months to feel like myself again, to feel like I could go to a workout class and keep up with everyone else and just really push myself hard and leave the class feeling like I gave it my all and that every day I was getting stronger and stronger. But I still did not look like I did pre-pregnancy, pre-IVF, and my weight didn't reflect that either. So that was a little frustrating, I'm not gonna lie. It's hard to not be like where you wanna be or whatever. But at the same time, I was so happy that I felt so good and I felt so strong that I tried to just move that out of my mind. Like, it's not a big deal. Your weight doesn't define you. 
And as long as you feel healthy and you can be consistent, the weight will come off and you will continue to change. And as long as you're eating, you know, a good diet and making an effort to be intentional with your diet, getting the proper nutrition in, then over time, those results will show. And I think this is something really important that I learned because for me, I feel like whenever I've tried to put a time limit on losing weight, like I want to lose this amount of weight in a month or 90 days or whatever, I feel like it backfires on me and it's just so much better when I can say my goal every day is to be consistent with this or that in my diet or my fitness routine and then you know a year from now I can look back and see where I've come. So I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm really rambly in this video but I just wanted to share my experience and my story because I wanted you guys to not feel alone if you feel if somebody out there feels alone or like their postpartum experience, their pregnancy journey, their IVF journey is just not what they expected it to be and you're not happy with your body or whatever, like there is hope and you, if you just show up and try to be consistent and start really small, then you can make changes and those changes will come. Even if it's like you have to look back a year later and see it, they will come. So as far as my weight and like my body changes have gone um, at 11 months postpartum. So just before my daughter turned a year, I was just a couple pounds over my pre IVF weight. So things were really great. I was feeling amazing. I started training for a marathon, which got canceled thanks to COVID, but it was just really a good time. And all last summer I was able to run a ton and enjoy running with my sister and training for a marathon and just working really hard. And that's kind of where I'm at now. However, I have gained back some weight. After I stopped training for my marathon, I did, and you know, through the holidays and stuff, I did gain a good five pounds at least. So I'm not necessarily at the weight that I want to be at, but I'm still feeling really good as far as the intensity that I'm able to give in my workouts. And I've seen some muscle changes. I've seen some more toning in my arms, which is awesome. But I will say one thing that I'm still kind of like, I don't know, bugged about is my tummy. And I'm just being honest with you guys because again, I, I want to share my experience so that it helps somebody else out there. Just understand that, you know, not everyone's postpartum journey is awesome and not everyone just gets back to where they want to be just like that. So my stomach never really went fully back to where it was before I got pregnant, even before IVF. I don't know, like I have always had a pretty small stomach, like that's always been sort of my least problematic area, I guess. I don't know, I hate saying that about my body because really nobody's body is a problem, like it, your body is a total gift, but um, I just, that was never like where I carried any weight or fat really. So now it's like, I've definitely got a little mom tummy, if that's what you want to call it, but I'm okay with that because I really hope to have another baby this year. We are really hoping that we can get pregnant this year. Our plan is to do another frozen embryo transfer in April or May. So yeah, I mean, my tummy hopefully will grow a lot this year if I'm lucky enough. So even though it didn't shrink right back down to where I wanted it to be after, you know, having my baby, it's okay because I don't really want it to do that. I want it to grow because that means I'm having another baby, which would be amazing. So I think I pretty much covered my story, but now I want to answer some questions that I got over from Instagram. I asked you guys over there if you had any questions about my postpartum journey that you wanted me to share. So I'm going to ask some of those. Um, the first one is any advice on healing the abs after having diastasis recti? I, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Um, I did not have that, so I can't really say, but I know there are a lot of really great yoga and other type of videos that direct that sort of issue. So I can link some down in the description box below that I've seen. Of course, it's probably a good idea to talk to your doctor or some kind of like physical therapist about that, but um, I do know that there are some exercises you can do. And I think if you've just had a baby and you're noticing that, 
then you definitely want to talk to your doctor as to when would be the best time to incorporate those exercises because you don't want to make it worse. But yeah, that's pretty much all I can share on that. I feel very grateful that I didn't have that this last pregnancy and I hope that I don't have to deal with that in the future. But honestly, it's worth it if you get to have a pregnancy and a baby. Okay, here's another question. It says, can you share your daily fitness routine and your diet? I'm really anxious to get going. I've gained 40 pounds and I've always been thin. So I'm assuming she's saying she's pregnant. She's already gained 40 pounds and that's totally fine because like I said, I gained 50 pounds. I know people who gain even more. It's okay as long as your body is healthy. I was also super swollen when I was pregnant. So a lot of that was water weight and came off pretty fast after having the baby. So don't be too stressed. So as far as like what I did right after having her, like I said, I took things really easy, but I think it's okay to get started with walking. I had a C-section and I was recommended to start walking right away because it helps with recovery after having a C-section. So I would start with walking, see how you feel. If you feel good, then walk more and more and more and more just as long as you feel good. And then once you hit that six weeks, then you know, check with your doctor and tell them what kinds of fitness programs or whatever you want to do. But I would say just try to get a good mix of cardio and strength training and diet is super, super important. So I know she asked about that as well. And I would just say, focus on one thing at a time. So focus on first drinking a ton of water or trying to get enough protein in. I think it's easier to do it that way. In my opinion, start with one thing. And then when that becomes a habit, then you know, move on to the next thing. So maybe you start with drinking a ton of water, like getting enough water in every day. And then once that becomes a habit, you don't have to think about it as much. Then maybe you start adding in a certain amount of grams of protein every day because that is so important. And then for me right now, one thing I'm working on is replacing snacks. So whenever I think, oh, I'm really hungry, I want a snack and I want to grab chips and salsa. Not that that's bad. I just, I just first think, okay, is there something else I can eat first? And then if I eat that and I still want some chips and salsa, then I'll do that. And it's not about like something lower calorie or whatever. It's more nutrition. Like, have I had enough veggies today? So I try to keep fruits and veggies cut up in my fridge at all times so I can easily grab them. So sometimes I'll be like, okay, before I eat chips and salsa, I'm going to eat some carrot sticks and hummus or celery and peanut butter. You know, it's just something with good fiber and nutrition. And then if I want chips and salsa after that, great, I'll have some. Maybe I'll even shred some cheese and make nachos and add guac and sour cream. This all sounds really good right now. For me, it's just all about being intentional and making an effort to get the proper amount of macronutrients and vitamins and minerals and then still eating, you know, whatever sounds really good to you. <laughs> so someone asked, what did you start with? And I'm assuming that they're referring to exercises and like I said, walking and yoga, those were the two things that I started with even before I got the clear for actually working out. Okay. This next question is, did you wear a belly band postpartum? I know they're not made for weight loss, but I'm just curious. I did wear a belly band and that's just cause my friend gave me one. And so I wore that. I didn't wear it right after having Ray, but I did start wearing it. I think a week after having her cause everything just still felt kind of jiggly. <laughs> And so I think I wore it for like a week or two off and on. And then I didn't really feel the need for it after that. I think it's more just for support and just feeling like everything's like being held in because you just feel like, ooh, everything's just kind of like moving around as it pleases. It's weird. And this next question says, how long did you have to wait to start working out again? And um, like I mentioned, it was six weeks, pretty much to the day of having my daughter and that was to do like any workout basically like my doctor said he said ease into it but like you can start doing whatever workouts you were doing before okay one more question and this one is can you share any tips on time management with a baby and how you stayed motivated so I'm assuming time management in order to find the time to exercise and stay motivated enough to do it because that's a big part of it. And I know that's really hard because you guys, it's so hard when you're tired and like the last thing you want to do is work out when you haven't really slept because your baby's been up at night. So I really get that. 
Um, but exercise does give you energy. It really does, even though it might not feel like that at the beginning. It really can give you a lot of energy. And I just feel like when I work out, I think the motivation for me is knowing that like I get that me time. And my husband knew that was really important to me. So he would help me to be able to make that a priority by helping with some of the responsibilities around the house, taking care of the baby. And another huge thing that I always talk about on my channel is the moms on call method. That's what really got us to get our daughter sleeping through the night at a very early young age, basically at a month old and then by two months, like full 12 hours through the night. And that was so helpful. Um, but I would say give yourself grace for like the first six months like I did. I'm really happy I did that. I had no expectations the first six months. I just was like, I'm just going to try to work out. And if I can work out consistently, whether that's three times a week or five days a week or whatever, that's great. But I am not putting any pressure on myself. At that time, I literally just worked out so that I could have me time. So sometimes that was just a walk. Sometimes it was a jog slash walk. Sometimes it was yoga. Sometimes I would go to a class, but it was hard to be motivated because I didn't feel like myself and my body felt heavy and it was hard. So I totally, totally get that. I also tried to work out with people a lot, like my sisters. So if that's kind of your jam, you like to be with people, then that was helpful. That helped me sort of stay motivated was being able to spend time with other people because I'm very extroverted and I enjoy my time with people. So those are just a few tips. I would say definitely look into Moms on Call if you haven't heard about it. It's a book. You can follow them on Instagram. I do believe they just launched courses. So it basically just helps you get on a routine, get on a schedule and get your baby to sleep through the night as soon as possible. I think without that, I wouldn't have been as successful in my postpartum fitness and health journey. Um, but I also owe a lot to my husband because he, like I said, helped me so much and totally respected that working out was a huge priority for me, not just physically, but like mentally I needed that. And I was a much better wife and mom when I had that time. So I feel like I've been talking forever. I hope you found this video helpful. I really just want to encourage you to give yourself grace, be good to yourself, and understand that we're all unique, we're all valuable. Our value does not lie in how fast we can bounce back after having a baby because that's just ridiculous. Like, think about that. That's just such a ridiculous thing, but I know it's easy to think and place value in that and see other people's recovery and see how quickly they bounce back and just be like, oh, that's amazing. And they're, I don't know, it's just silly, especially with social media and what we see on Instagram. Like it's, it's fine if that's their journey. And if that's your journey, that's amazing that, you know, some people just snap right back and I, that's amazing, but that's not everyone's story. So that's the point I wanted to get across in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you in my next one. Bye.